السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا يدري منكم شنآن قوم على لا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من قال لا إله إلا الله دخل الجنة وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كل أمتي يدخلون الجنة إلا من يعبى قيل من يعبى يا رسول الله قال من أطاعني دخل الجنة ومن عاصاني فقد أبى أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our nourisher, our sustainer, our creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sent Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as his final messenger. In this month of Rabi al-Awwal, as we think, reflect, that this was a very special month where the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born from the person Amina, an amazing journey that we take from the life and the example set by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam given that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he reaches that age of 40 Allah ta'ala confers upon him that status of nubuwa the status of prophethood Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam from the age of 40 right up until 63 years for 23 years of his life as a prophet as a messenger of Allah Allah ta'ala reminds us in the Quran لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah's favor upon the believers إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلِيهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ So this is the favor which Allah Ta'ala brings upon the believers. إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ When they send upon them رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ A messenger from among themselves. يَتْلُوَ عَلِيهِمْ آيَاتِهِ Who recited unto them the ayat وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And he purified them وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And he teaches them the kitab and hikmah The Quran and the Sunnah Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم is the messenger of Allah Not only is he teaching them the book he is also purified them. He is also doing tazkiyah. So when we think that here is the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was asked about most of the people that will enter Jannah, what type of action will they be indulging in? What did he say? He replied by saying, al Taqwa Allahi Azza wa Jal wa husn al khuluqi Most of the people that will enter the Jannah is because of these two qualities Having the Taqwa Allah and having the husn al khuluqi So the example set by the Messenger of Allah Look at his conduct and his behavior That he is that Prophet of Allah وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيزَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ if he was harsh and stern, they would have moved away from him. He is sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his akhlaq, his character, his conduct, so sublime that Almighty Allah Ta'ala in the Quran describes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ That you have a very high standard of character. So when we think and analyze that yes indeed, when it comes to the taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal, when it comes to the worshipping our Creator, when we are in the environment of the masjid, when we are worshipping our Creator, and we are coming closer and closer to Almighty Allah Ta'ala with our actions and ibadah and worship, this is what we find for the benefit of our own individual spiritual spirituality, our upliftment. But when it comes to the good conduct, husnul khuluqi, this is our interaction, our behavior, what is our mizaj and temperament, how do we conduct ourselves when we are 
with the masses, with the community, with the people, how do we behave? So we need to understand that for every person there is in the messenger of Allah an excellent example. He is that messenger of Allah whom Almighty Allah Ta'ala describes in the Quran as a rahmah and as a mercy for all of mankind. So he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is asked what will be that action ma aksara ma yudkhilu nas al jannah what did he say taqwa Allah azza wa jal wa hasn al khuluq so when you are performing your salawat when you are keeping your fast when you go for your hajj when you give your zakat when you do those actions and you are building your taqwa and your connection with your creator it doesn't stop there. How is our behavior? How do we conduct ourselves? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he is reported to have said, I have been sent to complete the morals of mankind. So we need to bring in our life the character, the personality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his, how did he behave with his family? What did he وسلم, said with regards to our parents? If you have children, the sons and the daughters, how do you behave with your neighbors? How do you behave with the non-Muslim? For every person in your workplace, in your workspace, in your home, how and what is our, and how is our conduct when it comes to showing mercy and rahmah even for the animals, even the environment, Islam and the environment. Every person have given been given their rights. And hence, in order to understand and in order to improve in our behavior, in our conduct, we have to look into the seerah and life of the personality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. How is it? That even before he reaches the age of 40, he is now 35 years of age. There comes a time for the rebuilding of the Kaaba. Who is the one that has been chosen? The one who has already been given the title as Al Amin, the trustworthy. So we need to see that he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, already is known to the people as the Al Amin, the one that is trustworthy. And look at our condition, look at our own self. We have to ask ourselves that if we say that we have love for the Prophet وسلم, we know what are our weaknesses, where we have failed in our conduct, in our behavior, even in our business dealings. See how much of corruption and how much of cheating there is in many, many matters that we are engaging, indulging in. Look at our own professional in our life. So hence, if we really think that just like how most of the people that will enter a Jannah is because they have taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal, they have husnul khuluqi. So having good character, and this is where we also lack in our character. If Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَعَانُ قَوْمٍ أَلَا أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا That the shana'an and the hatred of a people should not make you that you yourself become shana'an, that is the hatred should not turn you into a, like a criminal, that you yourself not just. Islam always emphasizes on justice. اِعْدِلُوا So whatever action also we do in our life, especially also at the time where we are coming closer to the general election, for example. And now we are concerned and worried because we have our real role model is Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you know, there are many matters that the believer needs to implement in his life, whether it is related to his eating habits, his food, whether it is related to his, even his, his attire, all those issues to protect and safeguard those characteristics which are religious and has to be protected. It 
also working and striving and trying to reduce a, you know, the greater harm, we also should, should, you know, we should not just think and say, yes, we have to follow the Quran and the Sunnah, because in order for us to continue holding on to our deen, holding on to uh, worshipping in our masajid, in order to protect and, uh, the, uh, and safeguard the upbringing of our children, we have in the life, in the example of the Prophet wasallam, given that again, Islamophobia is on the rise, given the great challenges that we are facing with the rise of Islamophobia, especially also at a time where almost every day that passes by, there is more negativity that you will see, that you will read about from the media. When you read about it, when you're listening to it every day, how do we still continue holding on to our good conduct? How do we still continue our journey? How do we behave? So husnul khuluq is a very deep topic, given that there are those who have so great a hatred for you. And وَلَا تَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذَنْ كَثِيرًا وَلَا تَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ If you are going to listen to those who have been given the book before you and those who are from the mushrikeen, other so much of inconvenience, so much of bad speech, hate speech, disparaging remarks, how do you respond? So part of the good conduct is, yes, we are very reactionary generally, but how do we have and hold and have perseverance? And that what do we do when you say that you have to have patience and also you have to have taqwa? So here again we are reminded that it is not sufficient for us just to complain and we read about it, we listen to it, but we don't do anything about it. So yes, we can, if we really want to make the change, then there are those from your, you know, if you are in, in the, the constituent and you are eligible to vote, how many of a people take this matter serious? One is saying that we have to vote, other is saying that how can you vote when you are not even registered to vote. So bear in mind, whether you like it or not, there will come on the 12th of December and this general election will take place and there will be those who will be elected. Do you know by your participation or by you deciding not to participate in many of the constituents, it can have a direct impact on the outcome of the result. We will continue after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.